Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvel. Today we will be making this vintage Valentine handkerchief doll. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make the vintage Valentine handkerchief doll, we will start with a 25 millimeter head bead. I've already created my face and you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face on my Focus on Faces video. My handkerchief is about 12 inches square. If your handkerchief is less than 12 inches, a 20 millimeter head bead will probably be a better proportion. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pull off two lengths of six inch tool. And since my handkerchief is 12 inches, these have to be at least 12 inches. I'm, this is probably closer to 18, but I always like to add a little extra. I can always cut it off. And then I'm folding this so this is four layers. And then my 1 16th inch ribbon I cut off about 15 inches of that and tie it off in the center. Then I will thread the ends of the ribbon through the bead from the bottom to the top. This particular bead has kind of a large hole. Some of them are smaller, but they, they all will work. So there I pulled it through until I can see that little bit of tool right there at the top. So I'm gonna back it up and then apply some glue right here and then slide the bead back on so that the glue is going to secure the head bead and I have this pulled through so that it's almost at the top. Then I'm going to tie this off so that it will be a hanging loop. You can hang your Valentine doll on a doorknob or hang it on the wall or whatever you like. So we're going to set this aside. Now my handkerchief is a printed handkerchief. And this will work with an embroidered handkerchief or a lace edged handkerchief or any handkerchief. Every handkerchief is a little bit different. And this one happens to have this sort of a scalloped edge. And um, I'm gonna pay attention to that because that kind of makes it special. But this, this technique will work with any kind of a handkerchief. So the first thing I'm going to do is I wanna make sure that I have the right side up. It's important to keep track of your right side and your wrong side for this project. Then I'm gonna fold it in half. I could press it, sometimes I press it, but you don't really need to. And then I'm gonna cut up the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now this is the wrong side and this is the right side. This happens to be easy to tell because it has some writing on it. So obviously if the writing is uh, is in the right direction, that's gonna be the right side. But I'm just gonna mark it with a pin because in case you have a handkerchief that it's hard to distinguish the right side from the wrong side, when you get it, then just go ahead and mark it. Now from this piece, this piece will become, again, there's the right side, will become the sleeves. The, these two sides will become the sleeves and this right here will become the center of the dress. For a 12 inch handkerchief, a three inch section is about the right amount to take from the center. So that's, I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm going to mark an inch and a half like this. And you can scale up or down according to the size of your handkerchief, just a little bit. It's not that big of a deal and you don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna 
can set that aside for a minute. Those will become the sleeves. And then this piece will be sewn to the center like this. You just pin it so you can see how this goes. And because I have this scalloped edge, I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna to have to sew this by hand. So I'm just gonna do a little hand stitching to secure these sides to the center panel. Um, I'm going to do a single strand of white thread and I'm gonna stitch along the scalloped edge. If you have straight edges, you can just do it on your sewing machine. When I overlap the larger piece over the center, I want to make sure that um, as I'm stitching, I have enough of a seam allowance. So I'm aiming to have about a quarter of an inch overlap here. And of course it'll be bigger here. I also want to be sure that I match up the bottom edge. So in other words, like, so I don't have it, you know, like that. I want to make sure I match up the edge. So I'll start right here and pin it and then I'll pin it along the rest of the edge. That looks good. And now as I stitch, I'm gonna start at the bottom because it's really important to get that lined up just right. So I have a single strand of thread and I'm just gonna do a little running stitch. So there's a knot in the end, so that's secured in the back. I'm gonna do this little running stitch right along the edge. And of course you will match your thread to your handkerchief. And if you don't, um, if you don't have a scalloped edge, you can just sew this on your machine. The seam is finished and I'm going to secure my thread on the back. I turn it over. I will show you what I mean by my seam allowance right here where the scallop comes in. It's about a quarter of an inch. So of course where it scallops out, it's a little bit wider. So I'm going to secure my thread and then I'll overlap the other side and I will stitch that side as well by hand. So for this side, it's the same thing. I will just overlap starting at the bottom, matching up those scallops. I'll try to overlap about the same amount that I did on this side. So again, I will start at the bottom. And then I'm just following the line of that uh, scallop. And I will secure the knot, I will secure the thread on the back. Now have a look at your dress. And quite frequently, I find that the underside of the panel, the center panel, has a little piece that can peek out. So I usually, this is the underside. I usually just cut off a little triangle from this little bit right here just to prevent that from happening. And I like the way that looks. So before I start on the sleeves, I'm going to go ahead and gather the top edge of this and place it around this. It's just kind of satisfying to see the dress begin to take shape instead of just having a bunch of random pieces ready to assemble at the end. I like, I like to see her take form as we go. I have a double strand of thread for the gathering and I'm going to start in the center back. I'm about a quarter of an inch down from the raw edge. And so I'll just do a little running stitch all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. The, um, the top neck edge will be concealed with a lace collar, so you don't have to make your stitches perfect. And now I will insert the doll with her petticoat inside with that panel lined up right beneath her chin. Just like this. That looks good. 
There's the panel. Then I'm going to wrap and, and actually, in addition to wrapping, I usually will go through a few times just to make sure it's going to stay up and you won't be able to pull it down. So I'll go across a couple of times and now I'll secure the thread in the back. And now I will trim the petticoat so that it's just a little bit longer than the handkerchief, about like that. I like when a little bit of the of the petticoat shows. Now before we add the lace around her neck, her lace collar, we're going to create the sleeves. Now let's create the sleeves. The sleeve piece um, will be a little bit too long if we don't square them off. So what I'm going to do is measure the, the height, which is about four and a half, and then measure four and a half this way, draw a line and cut that off so that I'm making squares. Otherwise, the sleeve is a little bit too long and you can line it up and see that um, it's just a little bit too long. So this is tricky, so I wanna make sure I explain it just right. You'll have your sleeve pieces with the finished corners on the top. One is, one is left, one is right. And to create the sleeves, we're gonna overlap the finished edge over the unfinished edge and hand tack that, hand stitch it. And then we're gonna gather this up and the hand will stick out of this end. So this finished edge will overlap, stitch, gather, and then the hand. It's just important to keep this oriented so that if I have this one just right and then I accidentally stitch this one this way, I'm going to wind up with, with these both the same direction with the finished edge in the bottom right. So I just want to be sure that I overlap this the right way. So just always keep your corners oriented correctly. And if you like, you can even mark them with a pin. We just wanna make sure that when we finish the sleeves, we have them overlapped in the opposite direction. So this one overlaps so that this corner is on the right. This one overlaps so that the finished corner is on the left. I'm going to take a single strand of thread and stitch these together. Once again, I will start by securing these finished edges, and then I'm just going to do a running stitch right along this edge. This step is hard to complete on a sewing machine, so I would recommend just stitching it quickly by hand, in and out, in and out, in and out. My left hand is underneath and I'm feeling the needle as it pokes through to the underside to be sure that I don't accidentally catch this second edge in my stitching. I'm going to secure my thread on the underside and then I will stitch the second sleeve. Now we'll create the hands. I like to use just a little craft stick, a little popsicle stick for the hands, and it will work with this size of handkerchief. But if you have a smaller project, you can use this. It's called a slim stick, and it's just uh, about a quarter of an inch, and you just work it the same way. I'm gonna cut off about an inch and a quarter or so from each end of the stick. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there will be sort of a splintered edge, but we're gonna cover that up with batting, so don't worry about that. And I have a double strand of thread. So I'm gonna gather up the cuff. I'm gonna come up, um, maybe I'll just start right here because this is my shortest side where this is where the scallop dips in. So I'm going to start right there, I think, and then just 
stitch along, trying to keep it kind of in a straight line. This will be the cuff. It's the finished edge of the handkerchief. I'm just stitching in and out, in and out, in and out. It does not have to be perfect. And now, remember this is the front with the little decorative edge. This piece of the popsicle stick is going to go inside like this. Then however much of the hand that you want to show. I think I need a little more than that, about this much. And then I'll secure the thread by wrapping it around the cuff. My white thread is really showing up against the, the red print, so I'm not gonna wrap it too many times. I'm gonna secure it with glue. So I'm going to hold on to the stitched part and fold back the sleeve to reveal the cut edge of the popsicle stick. There it is. And first, I'm going to add hot glue just inside the gathers to hold the sleeve to the stick. I'm going to add a touch of glue right here over this thread and then fold back my cuff a little bit just like that. And then I'm going to add just a pinch of polyfill over that cut edge. Now there's the little sp uh, splintery edge of the stick. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of polyfill there so that, um, you know, if somebody is is handling the doll, they won't get a splinter. We don't want the sleeve to be puffy. We want it to be kind of smooth and flat to the side of the doll's body. Now turn it right side out again and see how it looks. Okay, so there's one sleeve. Now we'll repeat for this sleeve. Okay, so here is the doll and her dress and her two sleeves. Remember the side that overlaps like this? The corner is here and this corner is here. Now I'm gonna gather up the top or the shoulder edge of the sleeve on both sides and then they'll be attached to the neck like this. This is a good time to look and see if you like the length of the sleeve because you can always make it shorter just by uh, tucking this in before you stitch. But I'm happy with this length. I like that length of sleeve. I'm good. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather up the top of each of these and attach them to the neck. The first sleeve is done, and so I will do a demonstration with the second sleeve. I'll secure my thread on the inside, and then I'm just gonna gather up through that single layer all the way around in and out, in and out with a running stitch. It's about a quarter of an inch down from the raw edge. Now I'll pull it tight and secure it. Now this is not tucked in, this is just the raw edge, which is fine. Um, you can tug it in if you need to make it shorter, but um, we don't need all that bulk up there next to the neck. So I just leave the edges raw. And now I'm going to place it on the side and I'm making sure that that folded edge, that the decorative part that folds over is on the outside. So not like this, like this. Then I'm just going to stitch across through the neck several times to secure. That looks good. Now I have an 18 inch length of 5 8 inch wide flat lace. I'll fold over one end and I'm going to gather this up to become her collar. First I'll secure the thread at the end. Now 
and then gather it up in and out all the way to the end. There we go. Now I'll place this around her neck with the ends in the back and secure this in back. This hides all the raw edges of the dress and the sleeves, which is why you don't really have to worry about that too much. Here's how it will look. And you can also see how you really don't want to put too much stuffing in there. If it, um, if it gets too puffy, it just, I don't know, it looks kind of ridiculous. So I'm securing the thread in the back. And now mm, I think I could add a little decoration to her collar. I think I'll use Baker's twine. Here's a nice piece of Baker's twine on the end of my needle. And it's important to have a needle that's big enough to accommodate the Baker's twine. So this one is just perfect. And then I'll tie this into a bow. That looks good. And then I'll tie off the streamers with an overhand knot in the end of each streamer. They don't have to be exactly the same length, but this one's a little too long. There we go. Now let's do the hair. To create the hair, I have two four by six inch index cards and I have my favorite loopy mohair yarn and I'm going to wrap this around the center of the card maybe 40 or 50 times. Well, I, <laughs> I counted 55, so I did 55 wraps. And now I'm gonna sew on my machine straight down the center this way, through the cards, through the yarn, through everything, right down the middle. This is how it looks. I sewed across, put the needle down, lifted the presser foot, and then sewed back. Now I'm going to tear out and remove the index card. There's the second half, and then I'm going to make sure that there aren't any little pieces of card in there. Nope. Okay, so there's our little wig. That looks like plenty of hair. Maybe 40 would have been enough. I think I'm going to cut some of that off. I'm going to apply glue right here across her head in front of the hanging loop. And then the center of the wig gets pressed into that glue. Then I'll continue adding glue around her head, down the side, around to the back center. And then the same way on the other side, down and around to the back center. Looks good. So I do have some extra in the back, which I'm gonna trim out now. I think 40 wraps would have been plenty for this project. There we go. Now I'm going to draw the loops up to the top of her head to create a little top knot or a bun. Now I have a double strand of quilting thread, which I'm going to use to tie this off. I'm just going to wrap it and then tie it about like this. I want to get it close to the head. Let me go back here and I'm going to knot it off in the back. I'm sorry my camera gave out for a second but I tied it off in the front and then I added one of these little pre-tied satin bows over the knot right there. And now I'm deciding what to add to her chin right here over the collar. For the collar, I could add a little glitter heart. <laughs> and then I was noticing the roses in the print and I checked to see what my roses look like, but they were a little too overwhelming. So I think I'm going to add just a little paper flower. They look like this, Recollections. And I'll glue that over the center of her bow. And 
and she's done. There's the front, there's the back. I'm sure you can imagine how a different type of handkerchief could create a completely different effect. For instance, a monogrammed handkerchief, you could place the monogram right here and that would be a lovely personalized gift for a friend. And of course, you could add a little halo and some wings and have a Christmas ornament. The, the options are only limited by the variety of handkerchiefs in your stash. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.